This week brings one hell of a lot of horrors on the printed page. If you can't find some kind of horror comic to like, then you're not looking too hard. Remember, these are simply previews of what's new in comic shops, not reviews. Here's what's new in horror comics, July 20th, 2022. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out This Week in Comic Book Horror, July 20th, 2022. Return of the Monsters, The Phantom Detective vs. Frankenstein, number one, is from Moonstone Press. The story is by Aaron Shapps with art by Jay Piscopo. I know nothing about this comic, but I love, love, love that Dan Barrington cover. It seems a masked detective is taking on Frankenstein's monster. That's good enough for me to be interested. Locust, The Ballad of Men, number one, is from Scout Comics. The story is by Massimo Rossi, with art by Alex Nito. Here's the follow-up to the surprisingly bent comic Locust that promises to have more cults, more monsters, more survivors, and of course, more man-sized locuses. Fans of Del Toro's Mimic should swarm all over this one. Playthings number two is from Scout Comics. The story is by John Clark, with art by Travis Williamson. The covers of this comic are downright chilling, and I love the premise, that of a toy chest full of horrific, monstrous toys. Think Toy Story, but only with the creepy toy amalgamations from the kid next door, and you might have an idea where this series is going. This issue has a creepy clown doll stalking a kid through a dark house. Bring it. Bloodstained Teeth, number four, is from Image Comics. The story is by Christian Ward, with art by Patrick Reynolds. Rat bastard vampire Atticus Sloan takes on a new kind of vampire who dines on memories as well as blood. I wonder how he would fare against an energy vampire like Colin Robinson. Maybe we'll get that answer someday. Until then, this proves to be a creative take on the vamp genre every month. Rad Wraith, number two, is from Scout Comics. The story is by Tristan Gallagher, with art by Christian Davari. I love the look of this gnarly new comic done by one of my dear friends, Christian Davari. It's about a kid who dies skateboarding and comes back as a freestyling ghost monster with a talking skateboard. Mixing skater culture with the supernatural has never been so good, and Dabari's art looks like a perfect fit for this series. Rogue's Gallery, number one, is from Image Comics. The story is by Hannah Rose May, with art by Justin Mason. I really dig the crazy premise of this comic. An actress who plays a superhero on TV has her home invaded by twisted fans of her series dressed up as villains of the hero in the series. It's as if some lunatics dressed up as the Joker, Penguin, Riddler, and Catwoman would attack Adam West's house. Sounds crazy enough to be cool, and I love me some home invasion horror. Count Crowley, Amateur Midnight Monster Hunter, number three, is from Dark Horse Comics. The story is by David Deschmalchian, that's the polka dot man from Suicide Squad, with art by Lucas Kettner. The new Count Crowley finds out her friend is a werewolf and about his time in the military during World War II, while a vampire takes an interest in the horror host's show. There's a lot of kooky fun to be had with this twisted horror series. Bunny Mask, The Hollow Inside, number three, is from Aftershock Comics. The story is by Paul Tobin, with art by Andrea Muti. A new monster on the prowl is called The Hollow, and it's up to Bunny Mask to act as an unlikely hero. Of course, it takes a monster to take out one in this follow-up to the hit series. After School, number two, is from Skybound Entertainment. The story is by Kate Heron and Bryony e. Redman, with art by Layla Leitz. This issue's anthology installment sounds like it could either be cringy or a timely tale ripped from the headlines. It tells the story of a mother who doesn't want her child and an urban legend about a monstrous stork that punishes parents who don't want their children. I do love that it's called The Storkening. I can't help but chuckle every time I read that. 
She Bites number one is from Scout Comics. The story is by Hedwig Hale, with art by Alberto Hernandez Jr. A suicidal babysitter is hired to take care of a 134-year-old vampire stuck in a child's body. How much misery can one comic contain? Find out in this new warped horror comic from Scout Comics. Madballs vs. Garbage Pail Kids number one is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Sholly Fish, with art by Jason Crosby. I had a few Mad Balls as a kid, but I absolutely loved me some Garbage Pail Kids. I think I have the entire run of those cards somewhere packed away. So consider me Team Garbage Pail Kids for this face-off to see who is the grossest toy line of them all. The Walking Dead Deluxe number 43 is from Skybound Entertainment. The story is by Robert Kirkman, with art by Charlie Adlard. The governor has seen better days. He's lost an eye and an arm to Michonne, but his hate-fueled heart still burns with revenge, and he's on his way to the prison to wipe Rick and his crew out for good, all represented in blood-spattered color this time around. DC vs. Vampires All Out War number 1 is from DC Comics. The story is by Matthew Rosenberg, Alex Pacnadel, and Guyami Singelin, with art by Guyami Singelin and Pascal Qualano. In this issue, John Constantine gathers together what heroes are left standing, which include Booster Gold, Deathstroke, Azrael, Bane, Deadman, and Mary Marvel, in a hardcore and brutal issue of action and horror as they take on zombie versions of your favorite heroes and villains of the DCU. Canary, number one, is from Comixology. The story is by Scott Snyder, with art by Dan Panosian. In 1891, a dark substance was found... 666 miles beneath the surface in a coal mine. That's all I need to know for me to be all in with this series. The cherry on top? It's written by horror meister Scott Snyder. Just give me this one to consume already, alright? The silver coin, number 12, is from Image Comics. The story is by Stephanie Phillips, and the art is by Michael Walsh. A troop of U.S. soldiers attempt to make their way through the French Alps during a blinding snowstorm, with Nazi forces waiting just over the next snowdrift. It's World War II action with the cursed silver coin right in the middle of the battlefield. This series rarely stumbles and is one of my favorite ongoings, all tied together with Michael Walsh's bone-chilling art. Life Zero number 6 is from Ablaze. The story is by Stefano Vietti, with art by Marco Cecchetto. I was able to catch up on the first five issues of Life Zero, and man is it good. Yes, it's about a military team fighting through a desolate city filled with zombies, and we've seen that before, but the combination of gritty action and Marco Cecchetto's stunning artwork makes this tough-as-nails comic a must-read for horror and action fans alike. The Brother of All Men, number one, is from Aftershock Comics. The story is by Zach Thompson, with art by Oyen Marin. This is one of the comics I've been chomping at the bit to read since I heard about its announcement. Folk horror is a tough sell, but when it's done right, it can be absolutely bone-chilling. Aside from Harrow County, there really hasn't been a whole lot of folk horror in comics, so I can't wait to see what kind of twisted, culty, and witchy terrors this book has in store for us all. I'll let you know what I think of it next time. I seriously can't wait to crack this one open. Ice Cream Man number 31 is from Image Comics. The story is by W. Maxwell Prince, with art by Martin Morazzo. Image is releasing this excellent anthology comic on the same day it's releasing its other two horror anthologies, After School and The Silver Coin. Man, why don't you spread out the love over the month, Image? Don't shoot your anthology load all in one week. What's wrong with you? I continue to admire this comic's gift for surreal, yet poignant storytelling. This issue seems to have a giving tree-like theme, and I'm sure it'll get me all weepy while making my toes quiver at the same time. I can't wait to read it. Alien Annual number one is from Marvel Comics. The story is by Philip Kennedy Johnson, with art by Salvador La Roca. The regular monthly team of Johnson and La Roca bring forth a one-and-done story set in the Alien universe, focusing on the star of the first awesome story arc. Gabriel Cruz, during his early years in the military, takes on the Xenomorphs in one of his first battles. Marvel continues to impress me with the way they're handling the Alien franchise. Finally, there's Shaolin Cowboy, Cruel to Be Kin, number 3, from Dark Horse Comics. 
The story and art are by Jeff Darrow. I know, I know, this isn't necessarily a horror comic, but it's my favorite comic by my favorite creator, and it's got a whole lot of bloodshed and carnage in it. Imagine if John Wick were an elderly Shaolin monk who travels through a fictional post-apocalyptic landscape brandishing only a gun and a sword. Now imagine that instead of thugs and hitmen, that monk were to fight dinosaurs, skeletons, aliens, and all sorts of bizarre creatures, and you might be able to begin to understand the balls-to-the-wall insanity that is Shaolin Cowboy. The most kinetic comic book is back, and there is absolutely no reason you shouldn't be hip-deep in it. That's it for this week's haul. I'll be picking up a bunch of these titles this week, including Shaolin Cowboy, Alien, Ice Cream Man, The Silver Coin, After School, Canary, The Brother of All Men, Life Zero, Madballs vs. Garbage Pail Kids, She Bites, Rogues Gallery. Shit, I'm going to have to get another job to pay for all this. How's about you? Let me know which ones look good to you down in the comments. inside your reality your doom oh your doom your Yeah.